How to do, folks. This here is old mountain man talking at you from the back side of this here lake in the hills of Arkansas. Shooting from inside my my home of uh, what I lovingly refer to as organized chaos. <laughs> that might confuse some people, but every genius out there will know what I mean. Well, at any rate, I wanted to talk here in this video about uh, ammunition and ammunition hoarding and what it's doing to the younger shooters out there. The, you know, the young ones that are just learning to shoot. You know, they don't have money. To, their parents don't have money. <laughs> they don't have money. They're, they're too young to buy ammo. A lot of them. And there are a lot of people out there that are coming across to the gun community, the firearms community, and learning to shoot. And what do most people learn to shoot with? Either a small gauge shotgun like a 410 or a 22 caliber rifle or a 22 caliber pistol. Well, there's really no shortage of 410 ammo unless you've got a you know, an isolated shortage in your hometown because of some hunting club going rabbit hunting or something, and everybody went and rushed to get them some 410 ammo. Of course, I don't really know many people who use 410s. I gave away a 410 to a little nine year old boy here a while back, went and got him some number eights. Yeah, did a bitty tiny bird shot. But I'm going way off the subject there, kind of, sort of. I still got to get him a tubular magazine to put in that 410. I got to go over to a gun parts site here in a little while. Check out the prices. But no, wait a minute. I got to get the info off of the firearm and then look up the part. But anyway, back to the subject at hand here. You know, I was talking with my brother here the other day, and he's got a son, my little nephew. And bless his heart, he loved to shoot a 22. But his his daddy, my brother, cannot find 22 ammo on the shelf. Well, way back in 2010, whenever I lived with a woman uh, about 91 miles south of here, southwest of here, something like that, up around Mount Ida, Arkansas, she asked me uh, why I was buying so much of the Remington bulk ammo. In 22 caliber, and I said, "Well, babe, one of these days you won't even be able to find it on the shelf." And she just kind of smiled, like, mm -hmm. "Well, okay, yeah, if you say so." Was that right? Mm -hmm. Because I keep my eye on things. There's these damn gun scares that go all go around every now and then. You know, this, this scare about the, all these damn gun control issues and shit, and outlawing this and outlawing that, and blah, blah, blah. And then finally things calm down, things settle down. And in the meantime, people are snatching up every damn caliber off the fucking shelves that they can get and acting like damn fools. Buying up all, and look, look at the way it's happening now. Things have appeared back on the shelf. A 22 caliber is still the favorite of the scalpers. I hate scalpers. Me and my brother Bo were discussing scalpers and how they, they just cabbage up on all the, they get the cabbage collectors into all the 22 ammo and 22 magnum ammo. That they can get their damn hands on, but there's plenty of other ammunition out there. And they're selling it at way inflated rates. And I told my brother, I said, I'd like to box them all up in the damn barn and set the barn on fire myself. He said that he was out in front of a place called Academy Sports. I've been there a few times. And it was on a day that one of the trucks come rolling in. He happened to get the word. 
and uh, dag gum. Uh, if there wasn't about 50 people out there lined up, 50 or more, I don't know. I don't remember exactly how he said it, but I'm just giving 50 as a frame of reference. If there was a bunch of people out there lined up, <coughs> a bunch of people out there lined up waiting to get in there to snatch that ammo up. And he's talking with people. And there was some poor folks that was buying a bunch of ammo and they had friends with them. And there was this this guy in a damn three-piece suit that was buying up ammo and doing the same thing, going online and selling it at inflated prices. Some people need to do that. Some people uh, don't need to do that. Do it anyway. You know, for whatever reason. I mean, how, how if I was rich, I wouldn't worry about it. I'd just worry about myself. Yeah, hell, if I was rich, I'd be snatching up a whole bunch of ammo from the distributor, from the maker. I'd go to CCI and Remington and say, hey, I want to make a contract with you to produce me so much ammunition. And then I'd put severe restrictions and have people put their damn identification cards down. And signing a list, and you, if they somebody wanted to buy ammunition, they had to come back in, put their card down. If they was a scalper or anybody hired scalpers, oh boy, I'd fix things to where there wouldn't be nobody hoarding up shit out of my store. I know it sounds a bit tight. It sounds like a, I don't know. A communist rationing tactic, but it's for the sake of the kid. If somebody's got kids, they get half off. If they got kids that are shooters, they'd have to bring that kid in to a DNA test. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm shitting there. But, you know, good God. It's all about the, this video is about the younger shooters out there. Please leave some ammo on the shelves for the kids. And if you're a, a gun shop or a, a Walmart employee, you might want to make a suggestion to your manager that some tighter restrictions be put on ammunition sales of 22 ammo. Yeah. Jesus. I don't know. I know it seems screwed up to suggest such a thing, but I think about my little, my little nephew. <laughs> he's, he's a, he's a shooter. He likes to get out there and burn it up. I think I'm going to gather up about a, a brick of that. I bought, back in 2010, I bought about, you know, all together in three months, I probably bought, a uh, you know, 10, 15 bricks of ammo. And I gave, you know, so many bricks to my buddy Bill down here so his little boy could have some ammo to shoot. And I've been trading my brother ammunition for, uh, for magnesium and a little bit of food now and then. When I say my brother gave me some food, I said, well, we made a trade. For some 22 ammo, maybe shotgun ammo. I really ain't got that much left. Uh, all together, probably got that brick of Remington and maybe two two bricks of CCI, and that's got to do me through the winter. You know, through the winter time, shooting squirrels, shooting rabbits. And, you know, sometimes them critters move and you know, you've got to take more than one shot. Sometimes it's a complete miss. Sometimes you wound the animal and you got to take that second shot. I don't like it when that happens. I've been hunting too long for that shit to happen to me. <laughs> yeah, right. Every experienced hunter will tell you. Every damn once in a while, that critter will, you know, he'll bob his head or turn his head or whichever and 
a mishap. Well, these Arkansas gray squirrels, I guarantee you, if you don't pop them little buggers in the head with one shot, they'll run off. If you, well, it's either one shot to the head or blow their heart out. If you blow the heart out, well, we shoot them up there in the chest, you tear those front legs up, and that's two bites of meat right there. Damn it. In a survival situation, two bites of meat is a lot. I talk about two bites of meat. You know how much meat gets wasted in my house thrown out? None. Unless it's burnt. And I learned my lesson on that. But survival and all that was really not the topic. You know, it's real kids, man. Be considerate of the younger shooters out there. Yeah, don't hoard ammo if you don't need it. Uh, don't hoard it. Hell, give it to some. You know, make a find somebody with in your family that's got a little kid that likes to shoot and give them some ammo. Be nice for the sake of some young shooter. That you know, practice makes perfect, and the more they practice, the Better they'll get. Who knows? That kid might be hunting food for you one day. Everything about that. Hmm. As old folks, we might be stove up or stuck in a damn wheelchair or something and need some kid to go out there and shoot us a mess of squirrels or uh, some, some such thing. You know, I used to do that for a few old folks over there in Oklahoma when I lived over there. I'd shoot them a mess of squirrels or rabbits. I'd say, what do you want? You you care for the uh, older animals? You don't want the young ones got the fat on them in the spring? Or, you know, what do you want? One old man, Cleve Childers. Yeah, I think his name is Cleve Childers. He said, I want to I like to have me a mess of young rabbits. And about a dozen of them. Just with the milk fat still on them. Just off the tip. And I said, well, Mr. Cleve, I'll go see what I can do for you. All right, now. Okay, I got to tighten that up. It's starting to miss it. Move my backer out of my cigarette. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I went and got Mr. Cleve. I was about oh, 16, 17 years old. I went and got him. Uh, there was about nine yeah. rabbits all together. He wanted 12, but he took nine. He's happy to have them, too. There's all pretty young, one older one, one older buck rabbit. And yeah, rabbits, according to sex, are called buck and doe, just like, just like deer. And uh, I seen him a couple of days later, and he said, son, I sure was good. He said, I cut the fat off them young rabbits, and I melted that down in the skillet, and I put a little flour in there, a little gravy, a little bit of Flour and milk in there made a gravy. That's some good eating with some biscuits. And that rabbit fried up for breakfast. He said, I ate on that for two mornings. And you know, that gave me a good feeling here. And that old man said, Pretty good dang feeling. Helping the old timer out. And I might need, you know, one of these days, heaven forbid, that, you know, I can't see the shoot or can't get out to shoot or whatever, you know, if an old age or accident or some damn thing puts me bad to where I can't do for myself like that, I would certainly hope that a youngster would, you know, 
go out if I paid for his ammo or give him some ammo. I'd certainly hope that he had gone out there and take me some game. You know, take some game, bring it to me. Just a little food for thought, I reckon. I'll see y'all folks later and this is the old mountain man signing off from the backside of this here lake in the hills of Arkansas reminding you. Remember the young ones the next time you go to buy twenty two ammunition and if you're gonna buy any extra, try to pass it off to a youngster and don't charge the parents a whole hell of a lot, if anything. You know, be good to yourselves and be good to each other. And you try to be good to each other. Yeah, that's, in, that's an important thing to me. That people be good to one another. Times are getting mighty bad out there in this world today and especially here in America. I think I've got a feeling things are going to go get a hell of a lot worse before they get any better. I'll talk with y'all later. Take care. Adios for now.